Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today we're talking about the doomsday prophecy following most highly sensitive people, if not all of them. I'm talking about this core statement I think most highly sensitive people came to grow up with. I call this statement too sensitive to dot dot dot. Chew on that for a second. What are you too sensitive to do? What is it that you're keeping yourself from because you don't think you could handle it? Because you're too sensitive to manage it? Because you would find it too overwhelming, too difficult, too strenuous? Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? And the thing is, sensitivity is such a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword because often it is thanks to our sensitivity that we can become aware of a lot of the injustice and suffering in the world. Thanks to our sensitivity, we can see when someone got hurt. We can note this when we hurt someone. We can see when we said something bad. We can see when somebody else is being bullied. We can see when other people are suffering. Yeah, we can see other people's struggles. And we can feel bad for them. And we can feel, oh my god, this is not good. This sucks. And then, I think often, sensitive people tend to confuse their role their duty, their issue, what they should do in real relation to all of this. Yeah, often I see sensitive types growing up feeling so hurt by seeing everyone suffering all around them that they either come to think that they have to become this Iron Man figure, so strong, so tough, so yeah, that you can do anything, you can solve anyone's sufferings, you can take on any struggle, any challenge, and you can make the world right, yeah, HSPs take on the world, that's why often HSPs are idealists, NF temperaments, because of that thought that my awareness of the suffering of the world creates a responsibility to make the world a better place. Now, this is really interesting. We carry the suffering of the world on our shoulders, and then we think, because of this, that our sensitivity is something bad. We think we can cut ourselves off from it, that we don't have to deal with it, that we can pretend to be tougher than we are, that we can carry on all the struggles for everyone else, and that we can keep on going. And here I see a lot of NFs do this. I see a lot of NFs going into this kind of caveman mentality. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking as caveman, but I'm talking like monster mentality, this Hulk mentality, this mentality of the strong, tough guy or girl, the champion, the person out there going out and fixing everything. And I see so much what suffering they are bringing in on their own. I see how, as they do, they're still sensitive, and they're not just not trying to be. And that's also why we have so many fallen champions in the world, so many people that have fallen on their own swords, that have gone out there, that have put themselves out there, that have made themselves strong, and that keep or that make themselves strong, but that keep on falling. And that's the thing I see constantly how demanding these people are of other healer types, how much these types tend to suck out of other types. The thing is, none of us are alone. And we should not be. And especially, it's hard to imagine why a feeler thinks they need to be alone. It's hard to understand why feeling types think they need to solve all problems on their own how they think they are the only ones that should struggle, nobody else. It's weird to think about why kindness can only be so one-sided. Why can it only come from you to the world? Why can't it never come from the world to you? The way I see it, my ideal world is this world where everyone is helping everyone. Everyone who wants to help helps everyone who wants to help. That's, of course, the ideal that I see in myself. Those who do, want, do not want to help and that don't see any need for it, they can go and do whatever they want. But the ones that help, that want to help, they should be helping each other and they should be accepting help in return. 
if you want to give help to the other uh, to the world you should also be ready to take on help from other people otherwise i don't think you should help anyone and it can be such small things it can be such a, a small sign the subtle thing you do it can be just something little and it doesn't have to be anything dramatic or anything crazy it can just be something something you think is appropriate something you think you like to do something you find interesting something you do you find rewarding or positive now often i feel that highly sensitive people need to turn their values upside down if you imagine that highly sensitive people today are all obsessing over their strength their endurance their resilience how strong they are, how good they are, how capable they are. We should be turning this around. Because we are kind of observing ourselves from the angle of people who do not get us. It's like we're judging ourselves by a fish ability to climb a tree. It's like we, are, we have this big skill, but we are not looking at this big skill. We're looking at the backside of it. We're looking at what we lack. We're looking at how we don't have the strength to fix everything and to correct everything and to do everything. And we're forgetting our role. And I, I said this earlier in the video and I want to come back to this. Your role. What does a role mean? A role is, of course, the frame of consciousness that you feel comfortable being in. Something important that you want to do. Something that you find to be important and meaningful. Something you find to be fun, positive and stimulating. The role of a healer type or of an HSP or of a person with an innate sensitivity should always be to work from and through this sensitivity to make the world a better place. You are the person listening to the struggles of other people and helping them realize the struggles of themselves. And you are the one that in listening give other people the power the understanding that they can take to move forward in life and to make changes for themselves. You are not the person listening to other people's struggles and then taking their struggles from them and saying, I'm going to fix this for you. And that's the thing uh, that I see all NFs, uh, all HSPs needing to combat. And I know a lot of NTs will also relate to being highly sensitive, and they are to some extent. But here, from this angle, I'm talking about the NF for idealist dilemma. I see that HSPs often confuse their role as being the person that puts together systems and power and that goes into science and creates these big inventions that, and the people that go in and champion everyone and slay all the demons and fix all the problems. NFs are like the people that want to be the healers, the pilots, the champions, the warriors, and everything the world ever needs. NFs think they need to be everything for everyone. They need to take on every issue, every challenge, every struggle. But here they are also kind of forcing boundaries. The number one boundary I kind of approached here was taking someone else's issues and struggles and making them your own. And that can be such, that can be actually quite problematic. It can be quite toxic in the sense that it can be why some HSPs fall into the enabler role. When other people have challenges and struggles, they come to you and they give them to you. And they say, you fix it for me. And then they get new struggles because they don't correct their behavior, because they don't realize what's wrong. And then they get new struggles and they come to you again and they keep on coming to you and you keep on feeling exhausted because suddenly you're not only carrying your own issues, but you're also carrying everyone else's. But I'm also talking about what happens with fallen warriors, the fallen idealists. And I, I feel like we have a big issue with fallen idealists. A fallen idealist, I was one myself, a person that has taken on so much that they have fallen apart and has to be put together again. A person who needs their bandages to be healed, the daredevil that comes to the doctor that needs to put, patch them together, the person that has to patch you together, the people around you that have to kind of 
deal with what you can't deal with in yourself because you're trying to deal with everyone else but yourself. I don't want to end on that kind of statement though because I want to know, I want you to know that acceptance of help and the chance to give help to other people is something innately positive. And yeah, now people are saying I'm contradicting myself, but no, I'm not. I'm really not. What I'm saying is help those that want to be helped. Ask for help with things that you know other people can help you with. And don't carry burdens. Don't carry problems that you can do nothing about. Don't linger on what you cannot heal, the wounds that you cannot heal, the issues you cannot solve. But work on those that you can solve. That is what it means to mature into the role of a healer. That is what it means to find a healthy way to be sensitive. To be asked for a favor, to be asked to do something for someone else, that is to be given power, that is to be given importance, that is to be given significance in other people's lives, that is to be made a person that matters. And that's why we should always ask other people for help, because we are giving them then the significance, the feeling that they matter to you. And that's something I see also so many idealists struggle with. You think that you're doing other people a favor by cutting yourself off from them. You think you're doing other people a favor by saying, my problems are my own, but you're really just making them feel insignificant to you. You're really just making them feel powerless. You're really just making them feel weak, as they can see clearly that you struggle or that you need them, but that you can't bring yourself to ask for help. And here's the thing, idealists need to be givers and they need to give and that's an important drive in you. That kindness, that benevolence is something at the heart of you and that's something you should work on and that's something you should always keep in yourself. And to be a giver, that's also something that you have to consider. What does it mean for you to be a giver? What kind of giver are you? What do you give? I see the HSP as the person that gives by listening, by understanding, by adding perspective, by adding wisdom, by adding truth. And I see also the idealist as the person that gives by showing you who you are and showing you what you can become. The world is warmer to us than it is to an average person. And the world is more like water to us than it is to the average person. If to the average person the world is earth, then to us it is water. If the, to the other person, to the average person, the world is this uh, cold place, to us it is a lot more warm. And there is a lot more chances for opportunities, for connections, for clicks, for help, for aid. And there is a lot more softness in everything. There is softness, hidden softness in everyone and everything we see. That's your unique frame of consciousness. That's the power you've been given. That's what you can do. That's what you can offer. You don't have to cut yourself off from your sensitivity. You don't have to become strong to deal with the problems you see because the problems you see are often of such a delicate nature that strength could not handle them to begin with. Often, the way you can solve your problems is not through power but through nurture. It is not by fighting, it's by watering. And when you are engaged in fighting, and when you're engaged with toughness, and when you're engaged with strength, you're not even solving the problems that you feel are such a big issue in your parents, and your friends, and your family's lives. What can we do to become human marshmallows and to feel good about it? And what can we do to make the world a better place by sharing off our marshmallowness? I don't know, this video is getting weird. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope to see you guys tomorrow and have a great Monday, if that is possible. I don't know. <laughs>